Um, so first of all, yeah, uh, you already, most of you already know me and Kent, obviously, I'm error 404, you see I'm at Civitas, Kent, no need presentation, but CPO at Civitas, and we have Sasha. CPO, CPO. CPO I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and here we have Sasha, uh, community lead at uh, Polymos, is that correct? And co-founder, correct? Yeah, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Polymos, yeah. Oh, oops. Yeah, just a bit higher than community lead. I'm sorry. So <laughs> co-founder and CEO, I apologize for that. Oh, all uh, good. All good. I don't care much <laughs> about titles. Like we're a team anyway. Everyone pitches. Yeah. Them, so. well, and, and if you think about it, every, every CEO is a community lead on its own. So <laughs> I guess that wasn't necessarily incorrect. So, all right. Uh, yeah, this has uh, been a very productive week for uh, us and Polymost. I mean, we have been uh, doing this call that has been going on, uh, you know, every single day with new activities. We kicked it off with a giveaway and continue with uh, an AMA on their server. Then yesterday with the trivia night and game night on their server. That was pretty cool. I even participated myself in the trivia night and uh, just went to the top uh, of the leaderboard just for lo for the lols. Then it dropped out mm -hmm. just to not steal some of the whitelist. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I would say I would say like it's actually even been longer than this. Like we've been we've been chatting for probably five six months um, with like the Polymos team because I think we felt very early on, and I think Sasha was the same. Like just very aligned in terms of like how we see games and how we see community and how building things of quality is important for like both of us. And so we've been chatting for many many months trying to find a way to like hey how do we how do we build this bridge like obviously we had to like move further in development and then have that opportunity so this is just super exciting that we're, we're getting that chance now to kind of build that foundation and like present it and this is just like the first steps of, of things we're going to be doing together so um super excited i'm sure i'm sure Sasha has his own kind of words on it too yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why we spoke to, to to you guys back then. Obviously, we felt what 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 you're building is is quite quite unique, and it's a it's a it's an interesting and also I want to almost say novel approach because it brings people yeah. in gaming also even to topics like governance and stuff. I mean, the, the whole yeah. sub sub DAO part of of the game is like especially for me personally, super exciting. And yeah, just the outlook of where this is supposed to go in this space, and mm -hmm. from from the get go that you guys were building something more uh, substantial and sustainable, yeah. rather than going for this quick, high priced NFT drop with like getting scarcity, make a bunch of money, and then have everything dump. Um, no, I think what you guys were doing yeah. early on, at least the plans were very uh, in interesting for us, so that we were yeah. very happy to keep the conversation going. Absolutely. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, we have plenty of people uh, already here and several questions already to start uh, to answer mm -hmm. to. So I guess we can kick it off from uh, the beginning. Uh, Achi, which uh, is a uh, hit lizard and uh, two questions into one, actually. Uh, let's start from the easy one. Um, which is not easy at all. Please explain more about the ever fragments. So yeah, we haven't uh, posted already the, the article about them. It's gonna go live soon, uh, soon today. But uh, Kent, I guess this is a time for spoilers, and you know to let everybody knows uh, what these fragments actually are. Probably. Yeah, definitely. I, I think we're we're super excited, and you know I'm gonna say as much as I can um, without taking the thunder that the team has for some pretty exciting announcements coming out but definitely enough to kind of share it and just be excited for a little bit more information that's coming out soon guys like today kind of thing uh but what what we were doing is we're looking at quite a few things we're, we're looking at what is the value of the chosen and why are they chosen and like we're obviously deciding that with like lore and other things but we definitely want the chosen themselves to play a bigger part in the world creation of civitas and what does that mean and people are holding it, having a lot more kind of say in that kind of like land generation, like how are the world they're building and playing a bigger part of it. So the the fragments are the first part of that. And the, the ever part is kind of uh, some lore that's going to be coming out. And I think if you guys paid attention when the, the first shamans were not revealed, there was like a little bit of text that popped up. It said like arriving from the ever. And 
now you're kind of seeing that extension with with like you know ever ever shards or the fragments and the crystals and you're kind of seeing this now um come in and where the ever is is the, the what's in between like wherever these characters came from the multiverse they're from and all coming into the same world where the the sub dials are the towers and that's that transfer of wherever that that motion was and where they came from is the ever itself and that's kind of where these fragments and these crystals are kind of coming from now what's going to be happening is uh holders of the chosen are going to be getting these fragments and they only kind of come from the chosen and there's going to be lots of different ways these are kind of used but what you're going to find is there's going to be kind of continual airdrops of these and they only come from the chosen and then there's going to be a system where you can kind of start combining some of these fragments and there's going to be a lot of different variations on how many you combine and what they need and what they can do but there's going to be a, a lot of few critical steps that kind of lead up to us showing this to you what it means but the first part will be when we start getting into actually generating the land and these crystals are kind of playing the part it's almost like the recipe it's like the attributes that we're kind of putting into it that's going to sort of form that creation and that's really going to be kind of player kind of controlled and you're really kind of shaping and crafting what you want your land to look like and what you're kind of getting out of it now after that once land generation creates we, we have some really exciting ways that these crystals are still going to be used where players are going to be able to sort of keep enhancing and modifying and adding sort of new resources into the land and there's going to be a lot of gamification in that and like game mechanics that make sense for depending on like the era that you're sub in and advancement. So there's always going to be this demand for crystal. There's always going to be a reason why players want them and wanting different ones. And there's going to be ways that if you use a crystal and you burnt it, you know, you have the way to kind of remove the one you burnt and put in a new one. So it's something where it's going to be like an evolving strategy that players as they're kind of making new decisions and go, actually, I don't need this now. I want that. I really want that crystal. They're going to have that kind of opportunity. So the Chosen are going to forever play this long-term role um, for land generation and for players of kind of wanting this modification to their land. And again, like there's a lot of more coming into it, but just want to kind of give that little leak without trying to take too much of the thunder. Awesome. Uh, awesome, Ken. Thanks a lot. Uh, the second part of the question from Achi was a more practical one in regards of the, regards of the upcoming Mint next Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, if we have a VL spot for the Mint, do we get to pay 0.25 Ethereum before the auction starts? How will it work? Uh, yeah, I guess this is the chance you know, to clarify a bit uh, uh, the whitelisting process for uh, during the auction. So, so the question was, do, can they prepay? I sorry, I couldn't hear there, Giorgio. Yeah, I think what Archie meant to ask is how the VL process will look like during the the mint. Will it be before, after? Do they have to pay before? Do they have to pay after? Can you just uh, so you if, give, uh, maybe a quick rundown on uh, how the just recap to people how the uh, Dutch action and uh, the following the whitelist will uh, will look uh, like. So if you're, if you're part of the whitelist, um, there is like a pre-mint for it and you do need like required a certain amount of ETH in it just to kind of activate that. And, you know, we have some kind of steps that we're just trying to, um, you know, prevent, you know, bots and stuff from being involved in it. Um, but the the whitelist will take place after the, the Dutch auction, but there isn't like a concern of, you know, if the Dutch auction sells out, it impacts the whitelist. We're kind of securing the whitelist first and we're kind of ensuring that, there's enough with the community who we're doing our events for and their participation, plus like all the amazing kind of partners that have the same vision of us. We're getting them involved and we're sort of making sure that this is all accounted for first. And then we're actually just reducing those numbers from the Dutch auction. So we're kind of locking in and securing the whitelist. And yes, there, there will be a 0 0.25 um, ETH is kind of required for, for the whitelist. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if I might jump in here, this is a question because yeah, obviously we've seen uh, other mints recently with Azra yeah. games, for example. So basically, on your end, you're you're saying one whitelist spot is a guaranteed mint if you're actually there yes. when it happens. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Cool. Hundred percent. Because I know that some people will be confused on that front, uh, since there's so many ways of how we can approach a whitelist. Yeah, definitely. 
but yeah, you, you're guaranteed a spot for it as long as you, you know, have been part participating from one of these communities and you've been told you have it. And if you got that recognition saying, hey, you're part of the whitelist, yeah, it's a guaranteed bid for you. So you don't need to worry about um, the Dutch auction or anything else kind of mm-hmm. impacting that. Cool. And on that regard, I also uh, will add that, uh, yeah, everybody that already won a spot, be it through or raffles or partners, mm-hmm. uh, don't worry about it. We are collecting the wallets by the 4th of October. We're going to have everything ready and your spot are secure. So if you got already communicated that you want a spot, be safe, you want it. Don't, uh, no, no need to worry. Just sit back and relax. And don't forget, you know, if you want more than one, uh, one token, you can always participate to the auction itself. There are many achievements for you to win. Yeah. Now, uh, there is a bit uh, of a mixed questions coming up after, so we might be going uh, back and forth to different subjects, but I'm just going to start from the beginning just to make sure to not miss any question. Uh, Low and Earth is asking, uh, how does someone become a mayor? And uh, I would like to add, maybe uh, remind also to people what a mayor is in Civitas. Yes. So a mayor still functions quite a bit like a regular citizen, like a citizen, but there is some differences. So when we get kind of closer to sort of defining, um, letting community get involved with kind of purchasing land or being part of a sub DAO, a lot more of these details will come out, but we do have a bit of stuff in the white paper. But think of your city. And think of it, you're kind of looking at your city as like a a bird's eye view and kind of imagine these larger hexagon tiles as that kind of bird eye view. And each each one of those tiles is like a suburb in a city. And and what happens is that, you know, we have the city itself and it's kind of say it's broken up into like 10 hexagon tiles. Now, imagine each one of those tiles is kind of where a mayor kind of comes in. And what will happen is when we start activating the sub down, getting that land generation, the mayor tile will be purchased first. And what that does is it basically unlocks the suburb. And now this kind of lets citizens kind of come in and purchase land within that suburb and kind of live there. And there's a lot of reasons why we're doing this. And a lot of it kind of comes into... Um, a mayor isn't like automatically a leader. They're kind of more like a spiritual kind of leader for your area. They kind of help organize groups into smaller communities within a sub And this is actually really, really important for that kind of role of when a sub starts, we need to be very, very careful in terms of like how you're growing community and how you're growing the, the culture within a sub So, you know, if you throw everybody into it, everybody has a voice and everyone's yelling and people get kind of drowned out and it's kind of really hard for people to sort of build those bonds and friendships and like that, let that stuff kind of naturally develop. So you can kind of imagine you join a sub DAO, but you might find out you're kind of in different suburbs with like a different mayor. And so you're kind of then breaking that up and you're letting this smaller group get a chance to know each other and work and build a strategy. Then this kind of flows out to the rest of your sub DAO. So it's a way of us kind of just ensuring that we can kind of have that process, but um, a mayor's play kind of this more of this more spiritual role for you and kind of represents you, but they're not automatically in like a, a government role or that leadership role. And all those kind of things are determined by each and every player that they vote with, with their uh, sub DAO kind of citizen NFT. Thank you, Kent. Uh, yeah. Next question is still from uh, Low and Earth, uh, which goes into the t- subject of land. Can land be bought with city, city tokens, of course? So city will definitely be needed uh, for your land to kind of activate it and turn the lights on. It's like, you know, giving it power. Um, We haven't really got to the point of really determining if city will be part of the actual land purchase. And uh, we're not really ready to kind of know if that's the right choice or not. But I think the moment we have any kind of decision on that. I think it's something we want to bring up to the community um, at that moment and kind of work out the details and kind of make sure how everyone feels about it. But yeah, internally, we haven't made those kind of decisions yet. And uh, still on the subject of land, Lowen has also another couple of questions. 
uh, will there be a rarity within the land or is it or its efficiency uh, like there will be a rare resources or diversity of resources within, within say the land uh, you know what makes one land more valuable than the other yeah, hundred percent. And there's, there's quite a few things that can kind of change what happens on your land. Um, one is just the sub value you're in. You know, it's definitely structured in a way that not every sub DAO has access to all the land. And this is kind of why you need to be building relationships and trading with other sub DAOs. And that's why it's really important because you all have other things we need to move forward. So that's going to happen. So it automatically means you're having something that other players will be needing. But if we kind of pull that back one layer to like, what about just your sub DAO? Yes, there's, there's absolutely going to be differences. And a part of it's going to come into what we talked about with these crystals that you're going to be able to kind of modify and kind of be part of that land generation event. So that's going to modify it in one layer. But there's also larger landscape features that will kind of influence your land. Because if you imagine a sub DAO, depending where it is, maybe there's a river that naturally kind of runs through a sub DAO. So if that kind of goes through your land, you have access to things that are coming out of that river. But at the same time, you're kind of losing usable space of things you can build on it. So everything has a trade-off, right? You're getting things that other players might not have, but you might be kind of losing something else or getting something that kind of modifies that. So there's going to be a balance that players will kind of determine on that kind of strategy of what's important to them and how they want to develop. And, you know, it, it's going to play a lot into that. But yes, there there is going to definitely be different attributes and kind of rarity kind of between the land. Thank you. Uh, so always in the subject of uh, land, although this is uh, kind of ambiguous, uh, Lowen also still asks, uh, can you name your town? And if you sell it later, will the name be changeable? Uh, town here, I guess, could go by, I guess he's referring by the land rather than the, um, you know, the city. There, there, we haven't really got into, like, if you name your tile, it's definitely something that we need to think about because obviously we're going to be working with really strong, you know, partners like Polymoss and others and that ability to kind of add names and customize things become really important for a lot of players. Now the sub DAO itself is a city, you know, you're, you're not actually a, like a town within a city. You have a piece of land within a city. So your city is going to be kind of pre-named, but you know, there's going to be opportunities for that sub DAO to kind of have more ways to sort of, build on their identity with like custom, you know, country flags and stuff like that. Um, and there will be some kind of level where we want you to kind of name your city, but yes, or your, your, your tile, sorry. Um, but definitely has you trading that or if you sold it, yeah, we want to make sure that those new owners have the way to kind of mark like their identity. And I'm sure we can have like a fun process of like how one tile names to like another in that kind of transition. Um, but we'll definitely kind of, work through and find ways that players can kind of put a little bit more of their thumbprint on it for the identity of it. All right, next question. Uh, this is from Lukaka, and I think I'm gonna answer that myself. Mm -hmm. uh, when do we plan to expand the utility of all the characters, including the Ever Fragments? Well, uh, yeah, the Ever Fragment, uh, that was partially answered by Kent already at the beginning, but I can already tell you that the, the article, uh, there is an article and a video coming up uh, just in a matter of uh, an hour or two tops. So uh, if they expect uh, to get uh, finally an answer on everything uh, on uh, just very, very soon today. And uh, yeah, so we finally have an answer on that. And obviously this is just the beginning with the character utility. Can't, I guess, uh, you know, we can assume that in the future there will be even more than just, uh, uh, you know, than, than the fragments and the, and the, oh, I was about to spoil the other main thing, but okay. <laughs> So I guess this is just the beginning of the journey for the character utility, is it? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Savant, uh, our dear moderator, asks, uh, are we on track with the roadmap, land NFT reveal, etc.? Yes. Definitely yes, given what we just said. Uh, Guy Dale asks, uh, and this is a question for Sasha, I guess, or for both of uh, Is Polymos the first person that will have a spot in game? Well, I'm not sure if I can answer that. Maybe Ken can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 
we we haven't we haven't locked it in sponsors guys like i think if you definitely read the white paper we ha- we have a section for it and like i said the, the partners we're talking to and announcing like i said we have a shared vision uh, i think like you know i'll let sasha talk a little bit more about like the vision that they have on 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 pulling most for like the games but we definitely feel we kind of have a shared vision in terms of like the quality products and what we're trying to deliver um but our end we haven't we haven't locked down those kind of sponsors yet for how they are and i think there's a lot more with the gameplay we want to like make sure is solid first and that's kind of hitting some of the fun marks before first before we show that to our partners and make sure that they get a better feeling and understanding of the game which i know they're going to be excited about because we're we're not confident of it but we want to make sure that they're also getting the right ability to see what we're making and have the proper time to talk about it, you know, with their community and their DAOs if they have it about this and make sure that, um, you know, they feel happy. Yeah. If I may jump in here, basically the way that we're yeah. looking at it is we're not in any kind of rush here. I mean, a lot of people tend to ask in Web3 uh, when these partnerships or collaborations are announced, whatever you want to call them, um, what exactly does that mean? And and very often, it's basically just a statement of we want to work together. I mean, we're so yeah. early, like whether that's Polymus in its building phase, whether that's Civitas in the game development, or even as GameFi as an industry space as a whole, we're so early. Yeah. So right now is, is the perfect time to team up with the, the right partners that share your vision, that share their vision of the future of the entire space and make mm-hmm. sure that together we're getting there. So for us, we're very much happy for, for the team to kind of like get it done on their side, be comfortable with what they, it is they're sharing and then take a look at it at that point. But obviously if, yes. if, like, if, if Ken wants to bring me in very early and like, I'm not going to see most <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> Yeah, this answer is also another question from Archie, which was asking in which way uh, us and Polymos are collaborating. So, yeah, I guess we'll pass it answer to that. And always on the subject of Polymos, Momento is asking, uh, how can I invest directly in Polymos? So, <laughs> this is your moment to shield. Yeah, like, I'm, how do we shill? I mean, it basically, investing into Polymus is, is going to be twofold. Like, either you can invest time and contribution and get rewarded for that, or obviously you can eventually buy the token. Now, what we did so far is we, we mostly raised strategic uh, money. So we had a pre-seed last year um, where we raised from, from, like, Delphi and Framework and some other high-profile uh, VCs. And then we obviously had our big seed round uh, earlier this year where the majority, like basically all our pre-seed investors at the VC stayed on and then a bunch of others came into the uh, support uh, bracket of ours. Now, there will be opportunities in the near future to invest into Polemos in the token as a, a I want to say, regular person without any kind of a judgment here. There's just another value judgment. Um, so we're still working out how exactly we're going to do that because very often when you want to sell something like a token and it's Mm -hmm. prior to a public sale, you have to find ways of how to actually do that because not everyone can invest into something via a SAFT, which is kind of like an agreement for future tokens because you have all these different legal regulations uh, in individual countries, are you in credited investor are you allowed to do that and all these kind of things so we're trying to find a way in order to get the community in early but obviously as soon as the token is trading publicly everyone will be able to buy it now before the question comes when um we would have been able with the token publicly for quite a while um as planned initially um but then obviously the market shifted and games were delayed so we don't see a reason to rush this out we're here for the long run um we're building for years to come we're looking for partners that do the same that's why we so so proud and kind of like eager to to work with the civitas team as well so for us it's not a rush but but we're expecting to see the public sale within the next I want to say roughly six months, but I don't want to be quoted on that because it is not a final leak. This is based yeah. gut feeling on today's market. In in six months, that could be quite different. Thanks, Sasha, for uh, for sharing all this uh, info. And 
switching back to Civitas guide hi uh, mm -hmm. Adel, and not that I should spell his name for this for that is asking is there a testing phase in which, we, uh, uh, in which uh, people will be able to you know um, check Civitas before the the final release the answer is pretty much yes but I guess also Absolutely. the you know good time to say when yeah I don't I don't I don't really want like I don't want to say when because I think there's a few things that need to happen on our end. Like first, um, there has to be a point where we feel there's enough content that we we want you guys to play, or in a snapshot, or something. We feel that we really want to make sure that hey, we we have a, a view of, of where we are in the game, and or maybe we feel really happy about it. But now we sort of want the community to kind of give us that honest feedback of you know, are we aligned to what we think? So we need to make sure we have enough substantial content developed and we feel at a good spot that we know when we get feedback, we can like, you know, act on that and pivot or change. But if it's too early, um, the feedback we're getting just isn't enough to like really address it because we're just not enough done. But we 100% know that a game of this kind of complexity, starting to get it into players' hands is important. So we definitely are pushing the team. It's definitely a thing we always bring up of... Hey, it's really important that once we get to a certain point, um, the holders that we have and people who are part of our community, having a way we can kind of cycle them in to kind of play with devs is important for us. It's just, it's so early for us right now to say what that date is because we have very obvious kind of things that we're working on right now that are, you know, we're addressing and we're not happy with it in the sense that it's not just hitting our quality of standard or the fun and the things we need. The progress is great, but we have high expectations on ourselves. Um, but the moment we get like a snapshot, we're hundred percent going to be getting different people in the community involved before the game is out. So it will happen. Just kind of stay with us guys. We're, you know, we're going to be really good at kind of showing you guys updates of gameplay and things we can as soon as we have it. Um, and we will get you guys involved as soon as we can. Definitely. And, uh, and sure gamers are getting into the server lately and kind of really mm -hmm. show more to them. Uh, this is a question uh, from a new member, Jeff, asking uh, yep. how to grow faster and uh, reap max benefits. That's a question for a music community manager, I guess. Just <laughs> first of all, welcome. Welcome to you and for anybody else that is uh, you know, new to the server, especially if you're, you know, you're coming from Polymos, very welcome. Uh, well, I mean, uh, how to grow up in the, in, uh, in the community? So I recommend everybody that is new to check the special roles channel here on the Discord, in which you will find uh, uh, several ways, you know, like uh, and the benefits that uh, uh, are achieved by being active in the community. And generally speaking, you know, like uh, and this allows me you know, to tell a bit more about what kind of community we're trying to build here. Uh, what we want, uh, uh, what uh, you know, we want for our community is to be you know a place where everybody is uh, you know helpful to each other, provide uh, to each other helpful information about uh, Civitas, you know, and for people also to connect in general, you know, fellow uh, gamer, fellow Web3, uh, you know, fellow Web3 aficionados, uh, uh, let's say, people into into trading crypto. We want everybody you know to have their uh, their space here. So whatever it is that uh, yep. is motivating you to be in this community. Just, you know, connect with the others. Feel free to talk with each other about any of the subjects. We have several different channels for uh, all uh, different separate subjects to be here. And, you know, just be useful to, to the rest of the community and uh, be an expert. That, that's really what it is about. And there are very, very different perks you can get uh, for just being active. And obviously, if you want to, you know, move it forward for further and be, become a hold, older, you deserve even much more benefits within the community. So that's uh, the gist of it. Uh, next question. Uh, when can I pay this in? Yeah, we already answered that. Oh, and I guess on a similar, on a similar, uh, uh, um, similar, kind of, kind of similar to the question I just answered too, but this is for, uh, for, uh, for Sasha. What is the current, the best way to get more involved with Polymos as a user? Um, I mean, sure. I mean, obviously, we, we do have like regular events, like we have our Saturday game night where we're asking the community what we want to play together. Um, there are opportunities to just be active on the Discord to, to follow what we're doing. But I think the, the most interesting thing going forward as we're now slowly ramping up um, tech stack release and like games coming live, what we're doing on our end is we currently have a system that we're calling community roles. 
And this is kind of like a way of our community for the more active ones to contribute in a way that further benefits like the entire protocol, uh, helping out the team. And we're planning to do a major revamp for that. And this is probably kind of like a little bit of a leak here. So right now, this these community roles are um, granting honor points as reward. And honor points are kind of like our in uh, ecosystem reputation kind of like uh, reward points. Now, going forward, we are actually going to reward our strategists, which is what we're calling those community roles 2.0. We will reward them with PLMS, so with our native token as rewards for their contribution. And there will be a variety of different positions, roles, whatever you want to call that, where people can apply and become an active core, not, maybe not, not, not a core contributor, but an active community contributor to the protocol and help out with moderation or tournament planning, content creation, all kinds of stuff. And they will be able to, to get rewards in, in terms of the native token that we will have then. Mm -hmm. That's, and uh, the next question uh, is uh, still for you, Sasha, and comes uh, nonetheless than our own marketing manager, Monty. Uh, Christian, by the way, if you want to jump on the stage, uh, just let me know and I will unmute you. Just, uh, just saying. Uh, so Monty wants to know, uh, you know, since uh, uh, he says uh, uh, working with, uh, with you, uh, Paul Emos, I mean, uh, I've seen so much professionalism and great collaboration and ideas. How many people are directly involved in Polymos and what are the next major steps? You partially answered the last part, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, the still stands regarding the team. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of stuff happening in our end. So right now we're about 40 full-time core contributors, and then you can add around, around 20 to 30 contracted on top, uh, which mostly is in the developments uh, on the development side. Um, because again, like many people try or not try many people see us as as a guild we're not a guild we're building a community on one side because we need the players i want the players in order to enhance their play experience and fuel the ecosystem mostly we're we're an infrastructure protocol we're building a lot of tech so we're going to have the polymers university which is going to have a lot of kind of game fi content about courses games uh, news all that kind of stuff then we're going to have the asset staking protocol where you can stake idle assets and have them utilized by other players in a variety of ways and generate a yield on that because you're not using them at that moment. And we're going to have a pretty in-depth uh, data analytics uh, platform as well. And for that in particular, we obviously have a lot more people working on this uh, beyond just the people in-house because you're not building a, a high quality dev team in a matter of weeks. And we wanted to hit the ground running from the development side right away. So that's why we teamed up with some great teams in that space already, which hopefully we will be able to announce in the near future as well. Now, in terms of major steps, we will have a soft launch on our end for parts of the tech stack. So it is related to the university and the data analytics and the platform dashboard with some of the initial progression of the throughout the honor system. Within, I hope, within the next, I want to say, six weeks. Um, and then we're looking at having major part of the rest of the tech stack released somewhere in this year, early next year. And shortly after that, everything goes well. The token as well with governance, these kind of things. So the next six months are going to be huge for the Polymus ecosystem. Because next to putting out all these milestones in terms of tech development, this is also the time where we will start to really market the, the entire protocol, which not, hasn't been done so far except for organic uh, collaborations, which I think is, is the best way to take it as a first step anyway, because you're building a real community and not just uh, purchased, purchased users. Thank you, Sasha. Um... The, you have a question uh, uh, from uh, our uh, Chinese community asking, uh, are there any plans to promote, uh, this, this goes back to Civitas, uh, are yeah. there pl any plans to promote it, uh, to promote Civitas to attract more traditional gamers? 100%. You, you know, I think, I do feel like everyone here is gamers, but yes, if we're kind of talking about, um, you know, traditional gamers, you know, the first thing we did actually was about our free men. You know, I know that's not 
looking like directly like you know gameplay but these are the game assets these are what you will be playing and that that was our first goal post to say hey we're, we're not releasing an image um that's going to be something in the future for a game that you don't know about like this you know i hope no one here is a, a pixelmon fan but it's not a pixelmon <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's we're saying hey this is the game asset day one we're not cutting corners we're doing the hard work up front we're we're delivering what we're saying first and not a promise for something later so we're already trying to show to gamers up front that we're delivering game related assets now definitely the things that's going to appeal the most to traditional gamers is gameplay and them seeing the mechanics and getting a feeling of what is happening so I think I saw another question of what what's coming next. And this kind of will be kind of related to that is we are doing this next mint and getting other characters. And this is really important for us. And I think we kind of talked about it in a different AMA about how it opens up lore and how it opens up what other characters can do. So this is really going to show that level of it. But afterwards, our focus was really about getting into showing you gameplay and showing things that happen on the land and start letting people understand what potentially, you know, the day-to-day activities might be on your individual piece of land. And then we'll start working. Once we feel happy with what you're doing by yourself is fun, then we're going to start kind of adding in all the layers of how you're doing things with the community and things within your sub on top of that. But it started with the first mint and it's going to continually be showing us like a, a ramp up of this is a game and, and that's who we're targeting. Yeah. 100 percent and uh you can uh, as, as a representative for the marketing team i can definitely tell that uh, in the near future after the mint we definitely plan to also cater more to gamers uh next question uh well actually the next question kind of is what were the answer what is the current focus of the team well obviously the mint but if you can't if you want to elaborate more on you know maybe just give us some insight on uh you know, uh, how the team uh, is working on also, because, you know, we, we are not a, a single focus here on this, uh, on, uh, yes. on the yeah, team. I was, so. I was, I was just going to say that, like, we have a large team and it, we don't put 100% of our resources to, you know, one thing. That's that's not, that's not how we function. So we definitely have a part of our team who's definitely working through um, the chosen, the art team, the tech team, you know, a lot of support structure behind that making sure that it's kind of clear and it's understood for the community and that are working towards that. But we have a team behind it that has been building the tools, the pipeline, everything that we sort of need for designers and the UI to kind of come in for the gameplay, making sure the interactions that we want for buildings and doing your land are there. So this has been going on for months. It isn't something that we just started. And like I said, it's a thing that we need to make sure it's fun it's so it's not quite art dress because obviously jumping into just dressing something from where you don't have the gameplay doesn't make sense. So we're still focusing on just making sure the fun and that kind of interactions are there. And we're going to keep doing on that. And the moment that we start feeling we got something good, we're going to be layering on top of that and getting kind of more of hitting like the art direction that we have. But the characters we have definitely sets the style we want. Um, and then we'll start kind of showing more of that off. And then we're going to be showing some little weeks in the coming weeks of what this is looking like or months guys so you know stay tuned but we we have a multi-faceted team that's working on a lot of different things at the same time uh the next question goes back to the testing of the game uh yeah we already partially answered that regarding when when it's going to be you know access to the game but there is an interesting part of the question Asking, will there be any requirements for joining the the playtest? You know, whenever it's going to be. But... So the first the first people we'll probably be looking at is definitely you know holders that we have you know that kind of came in as part of that. You know, they're the, they're the chosen. You know, there is a thing with that about kind of being involved. But at the same time, you know, we know we're going to have amazing. We have amazing community who's been so supportive of us um, and being. A, chosen or not shouldn't be a barrier to that and they've been with us from the beginning and supporting us and giving it feedback and we're 100 percent going to think of and have community ways that these big supporters for us have a chance to be involved with us so uh, we'll have a lot of ways for people will be playing with us like once we're ready awesome awesome and uh 
uh, there is another question that I'm not 100% sure to understand, but I'm going to ask it either way. Is there any plan to develop an exclusive trading market in the future? I, we, always within CVT as, as a game. Um, it's definitely not on our early roadmap. It's, you know, it's a lot of work to build anything for that kind of support. And, you know, Civitas is a big game and it's something that, you know, even when we get this out, we're not done. It's a thing that we want to be supporting for years and years and years. Like I said, when we designed this, we really looked at EVE Online and it just hit its 20 year anniversary this year, guys. Like think about it, 20 years of people who've kind of committed on community playing relationships and building that game. It's, it's, it's surreal. And so definitely as we get things out and we see the growth and we see what the community wants, we're going to be adding more things definitely on to future roadmaps to, for more support and features and things that you guys want. Um, but right now I think for us trying to think, Hey, should we have another marketplace with it? That, that's a lot of work too. And I think adding, more scope like that while we're so early wouldn't be the right choice but it's definitely things that we we've talked about but it'll, it'll be on like a future roadmap and right now the priority is definitely the game itself all right uh try to catch if we haven't uh, missed anything Aside for uh, silly questions uh, like uh, how do not silly but uh, let's say off topic question like uh, how do I grow my beard? I'm not going to answer. Serious that. question. I was I was waiting for that one too, to be honest. Uh, I already answered in the in the in the channel. Was saying <laughs> the, 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 the solution is is easy. Just be lazy and don't shave. Like <laughs> that's that's how you do, you do it. Uh, but I digress. Uh, this one is for Polymos once again, and uh, is about uh, Sasha. How, how do you how, how do you you know choose your partners and uh, you know the, which project 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 to be partnered with? Uh, is it uh, and also is it like an internal process uh, exclusively, or is it uh, you know does the your community have a voice onto that? Can you elaborate more into in, into this? I mean, absolutely. So, so the the way this works right now, first of all, of course, you you have the the phase of awareness. Like, if you're not aware of a project, you can't really look into them, let alone partner with them. So that that awareness phase could come from that awareness could come from any kind of angles. Like, it could be the community that pitches us. We have community contributors that are kind of like uh, out and about through the metaverse to to find new games for us. So they they might be the ones bringing it to us. Obviously, we're pretty active in the space ourselves as well. Then we have several like VCs as backers or just like individuals that have a lot of contacts. So first, there's awareness somehow, whether, whether or not that's through community VCs or ourselves. Uh, we'll then look into the game internally. And there are some key parts that we're trying to understand for that game in order to see if it's interesting for us. One is the team. Um, I'm personally always much more interested in partnering with a team rather than a vision um, because if the team has the right vision that's, and it's a good team, it's much more likely for them to actually be able to execute on that. Now, that doesn't mean that just because someone doesn't have credentials um, that they are not going to be able to make something excellent. Um, everyone starts out at some point. Um, so you kind of want to give people chances, but that's, again, you, you, you're giving a team a chance. There might be a very charismatic founder or a very charismatic team that, that look, they got everything together. Then, of course, that's interesting. The second part for us is gameplay. Like for us, we, we, we don't really believe that the games that we have so far in the space, at least to a lot of them, uh, that they were focusing on gameplay. They were more like gamified DeFi products rather than games enhanced by blockchain. And this is very, very crucial for us because most people in the space right now are in to some degree uh, looking for yield. So they are not looking for fun, entertaining games. Yeah. Now, as soon as that changes or the masses will come over because the enhancements of blockchain will provide an additional value proposition to all the gamers, the 3 billion that are waiting to be onboarded. So for us, gameplay needs to be fun. It needs to be sustainable. It needs to be an, an incentivizing factor in of itself, regardless of any yield that could be gained. And then it's the sustainability of the ecosystem. Yeah, you, like when you, when you look at uh, some of those early projects, 
um, for example, Axie Infinity, kudos to what they achieved, lots of success, a lot of money made. But even at their peak, when we when we founded Polymos, we said that this is not going to be sustainable. We said that the play churn kind of like mechanism that they are trying to to uh, take here is, is not something that they can keep up because, well, again, I keep saying that in a lot of these MAs, when the majority of players that come into your ecosystem are there for the sole purpose of extracting liquidity, then it begs the question, where does that money come from? It's certainly not because there are millions of players that are willingly spending on your game uh, because it's fun. Um, because if it would have been, the, the ecosystem would have been sustainable. So gameplay has to be fun, the economy has to be sustainable, and the team needs to be solid. That's kind of like the, the three main ones for us. If esports is a factor on top as a potential, great. But the first three is kind of like where the key is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree with you. And uh, still the subject of uh, Polymos. Uh, um, Sasha, can you, can you tell us more about the Polymos Armory? Sure. So, so the Armory is, so the, we're building, like, all our tech stack is, is going to be inside of what we're calling the Forge. And within the Forge, you will find the data analytics, you'll find the university you'll find other stuff in there governance token staking and you'll find the armory and the armory is is from a tech stack perspective the the core part of everything it's where you will be able to take any like for selective games that are integrated of course you will take the assets that you own for that game if it's integrated that you're not using it you can come to our platform you can stake these assets into the protocol it's permissionless like it's trustless it's uh, not non-collateralized which means that on the other side players will be able to take these assets out now that could be two ways one it's via a renting library where someone straight up pays money for your asset and rents it out for whatever amount of time and then there's money spent um, and obviously yield generated this way. The second is via yield programs. So the asset is utilized by a subset of our community that will put it to work in whatever way that's possible within that game. And then there, there are kind of like gains split there. The important part here to understand is that it's not a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. It's literally the opportunity for someone to come in, take the asset, and then have the ecosystem do the rest. There is no, I need to vet anyone that takes it. I need to be worried about who rents it. It's fully um, permissionless. It's, it's fully controlled. And the important thing is we're obviously looking at these kind of like game destructive actions as well. So for example, there are games out there where you will be able to fuse certain assets together to create a better one. Now, if you do that with a rented asset of someone else, obviously that person is not going to be very happy with that. Um, so these kind of actions need to be prevented. Same goes for if there's any kind of breeding mechanic in whatever form. If you use someone else's asset, your own asset, and you breed something, who owns the new one? So these kind of things need to be prevented, and, and we're solving that uh, on our like within our armory, the, this allowing someone to just come in, stake the asset and get a passive yield based on their overall contribution to the pool. Thank you for that. Um, so we are, uh, we are 50 minutes into the AMA and uh, I guess we still have uh, you know, nine to 10 minutes uh, left. Uh, if anybody, questions are uh, running scarce here. So if anybody wants to add something, this is your chance. Now or never, guys. Um, well, but uh, yeah, well, there is one here that which is a pretty big one. Animositas, our favorite content creator here and partner, is asking, uh, you know, the tough questions here. Uh, mm -hmm. We have since we haven't talked a uh, lot about physical production. We talk a lot about physical production, but not so much uh, uh, on the side of common 4x uh, games. Can't uh, and uh, yeah. he adds. Uh, would there be a mix of culture, religious, or art development on all your land and your city like we've seen in many Forex games? Yeah, I know. See, this always makes me leak things that I purposely didn't bring out yet. Um, 
Yes. Yes, there will. Um, right now, we're having quite a few discussions like with the design team, really just right around that. It was something we always wanted, so it wasn't new. It's just we wanted to make sure, like, how does that kind of fit in? But, you know, definitely we're kind of talking about how your sub DAO moves from one era to the other. If you kind of think about you're moving from like an ancient culture era into the next, like, what does that mean? Is it because you, you crafted something? Is it something about enlightenment? Is it something about knowledge or culture? Is it just, you produce something? So we're really kind of running through these kind of scenarios. Like what does it mean to advance into another era? It's, it shouldn't just be, Oh, we leveled up. We're here guys. Cause that's very boring. It should be something where, these sub DAOs are kind of making these decisions of like, hey, we want to be really advanced into these kind of things about culture or art or, or science or other things. And the buildings that we do talk about will kind of start fitting into these kind of areas. So yes, you will be kind of making these kind of decisions. And we do have some kind of interesting ways uh, to to kind of bring in these things and we're 100 percent going to be kind of talking about it more because yeah they're really fun it's like we almost wanted to save it for just like it, its own thing of talking about how all these things will kind of play and right now we've been very kind of focusing on the the production side of buildings you make but yes you know you're making me leak it but these things will be kind of coming up very soon where we just talk about these kind of developments and how sub DAOs are making choices of how they develop Thank you. And still on the same subject, we have a question from Moglin. Uh, how does the last uh, X uh, exterminate, eliminate all the players commonly through warfare play out in Civitas? Sorry, I couldn't hear you there. I think I cut out for a quick sec. Oh, uh, is, uh, Moglin is asking, uh, you know, how the, you know, 4X stand for uh, uh, exploration, exploitation, uh, and uh, I forget the third one, but the fourth one is exterminate. Uh, so yeah, yeah it's, it's asking basically you know, about the, the the fighting part of the game. Let's say how how does the warfare yes. uh, in uh, in uh, yes. in, the, in Civitas plays out. So we we are in the four X genre, but we're definitely not your typical four X, and we are kind of redefining it. I think we just haven't got like a good word for it because there is things that we're doing in it that we can't draw a comparison with of other things out there, and. We will have P versus P in Civitas. And, you know, there's a TBD section on the white paper because that's the next thing that I'm kind of working on about showing too. But I can kind of talk a little bit about at least what we're kind of thinking on our end. So things that are important to us is we want to definitely avoid city versus city attacking cities directly. And we're not into this idea where people are going to go to sleep and then all of a sudden they feel like, oh, we better have a a pay to win shield that protects our city while I sleep because, you know, America's coming online and Asia's going to sleep now. You know, we don't want these kind of scenarios. We don't want that kind of mood where people work really hard on their cities and all of a sudden it's been crashed by another city and you kind of feel demoralized by it. Um, but at the same time, we do want Peavers P. We want it to be in a fun way. And the way that we're kind of thinking about it right now is this idea of points of interest that appear on the map. So think about sections around the world that don't belong to a sub DAO is kind of free for all. So there is maybe strategic resources, maybe like a meteor fell to the earth and it has like an NFT with it plus rare resources and it could be claimed by another sub DAO if they kind of develop an army and that comes into people working together to produce it. And then they have to claim it and other sub DAOs are competing for it or other resources or strategic trade posts or other things around the map that you're kind of in this flux of competing with. And these are kind of where the balance of power could change where other sub DAOs might want to, you know, rally together because one sub DAO is trying to take too much. So I, we feel like this is a really fun dynamic way and kind of avoiding this idea of just directly attacking cities and, even when we think about, hey, how, what happens in the future? Like, how far can sub DAO advance? And then we think about, okay, well, if you got your sub DAO to a point that you're so advanced that you should be able to access leaving Earth and Earth is too small for you now, what does that mean? Like, where do you go after that? And what, how's that competition? 
So like we're playing with these ideas we have, but the core thing is like we definitely want to avoid like cities just attacking other cities while you're sleeping and you just feel like demoralized from it. We want to protect that and make sure you kind of have a place for your 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 sub DAO and your community you can build. But the world itself is kind of like your oyster that you guys are going to be competing for things on the map. It's a fantastic uh, news, even uh, especially for uh, for myself as a community manager. Coming from uh, an experience working on a PvP online uh, survival game with full loot, I'd definitely be happy if, to not have to wake up every day to the to somebody in the con community going crazy because they lost everything. So that's great yeah. news for me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're almost at the end of our AMA. So and if anybody has some last minute question, this is the time. Uh, somebody was asking me if uh, we are recording the AMA, and yeah, the, the, the answer is yes. It's uh, everything being recorded, so uh, we're going to publish it as soon as possible as well. Uh, I currently don't see any uh, question. There is one from Moglin asking partner planets. I'm not 100% sure to... Yeah, that's that's to? that's early. It could be something that happens one day. Uh, so I won't say no, never. But that's that's not a that's nothing we're planning for right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since there are no additional questions and we are almost out of time, I guess this is the time you know, to wrap up. Just to uh, remind everyone uh, what uh, what is coming up in the next few days. Uh, Obviously, we have the Mint uh, on the 4th of October, just uh, next Tuesday. It's going to be a Dutch auction. Uh, there's going to be you know, what, people able to, uh, to attend the whitelist. There's going to be eventually a public sale. Many, many mm -hmm. things happening. And, you know, the, the whole uh, chosen, of, the, the current chosen of Citas collection is uh, going to be available for Mint there with, uh, you know, several uh, new characters that we unveiled in the past few weeks. Characters are going to have uh, different kinds of utility, both in the game and, you know, like uh, regarding on the on the blockchain aspect of that. We're going to reveal more on the fragments uh, today, just uh, in a matter of uh, hours, if not less. Yeah, stay, stay tuned. Monty is working. We've been working on a video that explains a lot of stuff regarding um, the fragments and the crystals and how that works. And we're going to be publishing that video tonight. So... Um, that will definitely answer a lot more questions and I'm sure it will bring up new questions too that we're going to be happy to answer but I think you guys are going to be pretty excited when you when you see the video yeah definitely and Sasha do you have uh, any final word for to share with uh, with our community uh, I just want to say thank you for for having me obviously it's super interesting to get these additional insights for our, for us as well and to have the opportunity to to talk to everyone and be a part of this and yeah everyone interested in, in polymers in the ecosystem definitely keep an eye on what we're doing because we've been building efficiently for for a full year now and there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. coming before this year is over awesome all right Thank you, Sasha. It's been a pleasure having you here, and uh, it's been a pleasure, you know, doing uh, all of this stuff together during this uh, this these days. And uh, there is also more to come. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. we have another event together planned during the weekend. So, yeah, no, just the beginning overall, anyway. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Looking forward for the long uh, call, a beer. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate I guess... everyone spending the time here. Yeah, thanks a lot to everyone who joined. And there was a lot of participation and a lot of uh, interesting questions. And yeah, stay tuned. Don't go to sleep because we have uh, explanations on the on the fragments coming up soon. Cheers, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.